Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to One Shape. In this tutorial we're going to learn how to make this twisted connector on the screen. This tutorial was adapted from a video from another creator on YouTube called Cadamist. Um, only when I tried to follow the tutorial I encountered a few problems so I decided to re-record my own version to eliminate those problems and try and make it easier for people to follow. So what we could do to, use, uh, to create this um, shape is to use the loft tool. But since we've used the loft tool in other videos, we're going to use something else called the bridging curve tool. So let's make a start and create this 3D model. So start by creating your own document. And then you need to click on the sketch button to create a sketch. And we're going to choose the front plane. So click the front plane and then you can either press N on your keyboard or click on the front plane in the view cube to look at that head on. And now we're going to create a sketch. So start by going to the rectangle tool and choose the center point rectangle. Now go to the uh, central line in your front plane, but don't go to the center point. Uh, so about halfway along, um, create a rectangle. Any size is fine because we're going to change the size with the dimension tool in a moment. So when you've got a rectangle, click to apply that and now we're going to change the size. Go to the dimension tool, click on the top of your rectangle, move the mouse cursor outward, click again and we're going to use a measurement of four centimeters here and then press enter. Then click on the uh, other side of your rectangle, move the mouse cursor outward, click again and we're going to use a measurement of 2.5 centimeters and press enter. The next step is to click on the three pointed arc tool. Um, so make sure you've chosen that one. So in that tool slot, there's tangent arc, center point arc. We want the top one, the three pointed arc tool. Click on that and then click in the top left hand corner of your rectangle. Click again in the bottom uh, corner and then move the mouse cursor to the side until it kind of snaps into position and gives you a semicircle and then click to complete that. All right, so now go to the center point circle tool and go to the uh, center um, of the um, semicircle that you've just created where those lines intersect. Click once, move the mouse cursor outward. Um, any size for this circle is fine, just something you're happy with. So create the circle and then click to apply that. All right, once you've done that, go to the scissors, the trim tool, click that and just delete those additional lines running through your circle because we don't need those anymore. All right, the final thing is to go to the line tool and move along the toolbar and find the construction tool. Click that and then go to the, uh, the center point of your um, shape, click it, and then just draw a construction line along to about the center point of your plane. And you can see the line that's been created, it's not a solid line, it's got some dots, so that's a construction line. Um, it will try to continue that construction line, so just press escape, um, and that's our sketch complete. So when you've done that, click the green check mark. So if we just rotate the camera slightly, we can see the shape that we've created. Um, it looks just like a rectangle with a semicircle coming out of the end and a, a circle in it, uh, and then a construction line coming out from the center of that shape. So we're going to add an extrusion. So to do that, click the extrude tool, then click on the face of your shape, and we're going to change the depth of this extrusion to 12 millimeters, press enter, and check the symmetric box so it extends equally outside of um, the sketch and then click the green check mark. The next step is to mirror this shape that we've created so um, reposition the camera by clicking on the front view of your view cube or just pressing the N key on your keyboard and now go to the uh, mirror tool which looks like two blocks mirrored. It's right in the middle of the toolbar at the top of the screen. Click that 
and then it will say entities to mirror. So click on the 3D model that you've just created and then rotate the camera slightly so you can see this plane here that we're going to mirror it along. So it says choose a mirror plane. So click that red box and then choose the plane that you want to mirror it along. And I'm going to mirror it on this right plane. So click that and now we've got a mirrored version of our 3D model. So when you've done that, click the green check mark and uh, you can click on the front of the view cube to reposition the camera. And you can see now we've got sketch one, which is hidden. So we've got that cross through the eye. We've got extrusion one. Um, so if I click on that, that's extrusion one. And mirror one is this one here. The next step is to rotate the mirrored part. So to do that, we need to choose the transform tool. So go to the toolbar at the top of the window and choose the icon that looks like one block falling off another surrounded by two arrows. That's the transform tool. Click that once and it will say um, entities to transform or copy. And below that you'll see translate by line. First thing we're going to do is change that translate by line. Click that and choose rotate from the list. Now we're going to choose uh, the entity to copy, which is going to be the um, mirrored piece. So click that once to choose it. Uh, and there you can see it's appeared, part number two. And then below, click on the axis that you want to um, rotate it around. So we're going to need to move the camera a little bit to re uh, reveal that construction line. If you can't see that construction line because sketch one is hidden, um, just click to reveal it. Um, so that you can actually see that sketch. And then click on the construction line and that will then rotate the shape. And by default, it rotates to 30 degrees. So we're gonna change that angle to 90 degrees instead. And then press enter and you'll see it's fully rotated 90 degrees. Once you've done that, click the green check mark to apply that um, rotation. So the next step is to create the twisted connection between these two parts. So to do that, we're going to use something called the bridging curve tool. Um, and this tool creates a smooth curved line to connect either two edges, um, faces or, or points. And it's very similar to the loft tool in that it can create a smooth transition between different pieces. Um, but since we've already used the loft tool in another video, we're going to use the, uh, the bridging curve tool so we can see how that works. But the bridging curve tool is not in the uh, menu at the top of the screen at the minute. So where it has plane right now, that's where the um, tool is going to appear. But first thing we need to do is go to the search tools button in the top right hand side, click that and just type the word bridge. And then it will appear in the list there. So there it is, click that once and now it will appear in the menu. And we've already got an instance of it appear on the screen here. So um, it's saying where do we want to start this connection and where do we want it to end? So if we just um, rotate this model a little bit, uh, what we're going to do is choose a corner to connect and then um, an axis of where the line is going to kind of emanate from. So um, the first one I'm going to do is this corner here. So click that so it's highlighted in orange um, and then choose the um, line that the um, bridging curve is going to come from, originate from. So click that um, and then it's going to want the end point. So we're going to go from this point to this point. So click that and we want it to follow this line. There we go. And you can see that purple lines appeared. So when you've done that, simply click the green check mark and then repeat that process for the other corners. So click on the bridging curve tool, click on the corner, click on the line it's going to come from, and you might need to rotate this a little bit. We're going to join that corner and follow that line. There we go. And then click on the green check mark, and we're going to do this uh, another two times. So let's look at this from the other angle. Um, go to the bridging curve tool, click on the corner, click on the line it's coming out of, click on the corner it's gonna join, and the line it's going to follow. Um, and then let's do the last one. So again, click the green check mark, click the bridging curve tool. So this is our fourth one now. Um, you can see it's trying to draw on the uh, 
construction line. So I'm just going to hide that sketch. There we go. Um, choose the corner, the line it's coming from, the corner it's going to connect to, and the line that it's going to follow. And you can see here we've got, um, it starts from the vertex of extrude. And you can see that dot, that corner is highlighted in yellow. It's going to follow that line. It's going to connect to that point, and you can see on the model it's highlighted in yellow, and it's going to follow that line. And that's how it works. So all you need to do now is click on the green check mark. And there we go. So if I just um, click on the front view now just to reposition that camera, you can see as I rotate that now, we've got this twisted connector, but they're just lines right now. So we're going to use another tool to turn these into solid faces. And the tool we're going to use is called the Fill Tool. So what does the Fill Tool do? It creates a, a flat or curved surface, um, and it's used to close gaps by filling in boundary edges, so the, the edges of a certain shape. So let's choose that now. Again, just like the Bridging Curve Tool, it's not visible in the toolbar. So go to Search Tools and click that, and then you go into Type Fill, and we've got a, a series of tools. Uh, we're going to choose the one that looks like a net and it's got fill next to it. So click that and that will appear where the bridging tool was before. And we've already got this um, instance here of the tool open. So what we need to do now is choose the uh, pieces of the model that we want to turn into a face. So to do that, let's start with the first curve. Um, so we're going to click the edge of that. So one, two, three, four. And you can see that's become a solid um, face now. It's been filled in with gray. Click the green check mark and start to move around the model and do the other faces. So again, click on the fill tool. One, two, three, four. There we go. And then click on the green check mark and repeat that process. Move around the model. Click fill. One, two, three, four, and then the last one. And this always looks a little bit difficult because it already looks like it's filled in. So click the green check mark, go back to the fill tool. One, two, three, four. There we go. And then click the green check mark. All right. So the next step is to turn this twisted connection into a solid piece. And to do that, we need to go to the top left hand side of the screen and you'll see a, like a box with an, a down arrow. If you click on the little um, black arrow next to that, you're going to choose the enclose option. So click that once, and then it's going to want to know which parts you want to turn into a solid shape. So we've got this entities here. So if we just reposition the camera, and we're going to move around, we're going to click on each side of this twisted connection, like that. All right, and we also need to get the ends inside. So to do that, hide part number two. So click on the eye icon to hide that. Rotate the camera so that you can see inside. You might need to zoom in a little bit, but you're gonna click on that blue face inside and that will become orange. And you can see there we've got the four sides in our list and then the face of the extrusion. And then go back to um, part two, reveal that and hide part one and do the same thing. Turn the uh, 3D model around, so rotate that, choose that other face inside. There we go. Um, so now we've got the four faces that we just created of the twisted connector, the face of the extrusion, and the face of the, uh, the mirrored section. And because uh, this will now delete the two ends of our shape, we wanna stop that from happening. So make sure you put a check mark in Keep Tools. So click that and then click on the green check mark. And now you can see um, we've got uh, a piece. Now, where did the other end go? Well, that's simply not visible because part one isn't shown at the minute. So just click on the eye icon in the features list next to part one, and that will reveal the whole thing there. All right, so there we go. That's our um, 3D model with the twisted connection. It's not finished just yet. So you can see the twisted connector part has these weird looking artifacts. And that's because um, in our features list, we've got part one, part two, which is the twisted connection. Uh, sorry, that's the, uh, the mirrored part and part three, which is the twisted connection. And now we've got this bit surface. 
And that those are the faces that we created before. So we want to just be left with part one, part two, and solid part three. So where you see surfaces one, just click that eye icon to hide that, and now those artifacts have disappeared, all right? So there's our twisted connector. Um, it looks finished, but um, we could stop there, but it's not quite done just yet. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a chamfer to it. So what's a chamfer, if you haven't used this before? Um, basically, the chamfer tool is used to cut off sharp corners um, and replace them with slanted edges. So if you were 3D printing a part, um, it would make the part smoother and, and easier to handle. So it basically just removes the sharp edges. So let's add a chamfer to this. So to do that, we're going to go to the chamfer tool. So it looks like a, a cube with the corner chopped off. So click that and then um, it'll say uh, ed entities to chamfer. So we're just going to move around this um, model. So we'll start with um, part one. So we'll click that and you'll see there it's um, added this smooth edge, right? Okay. And then we'll move around that part. We'll do the other bits. There we go. And if you have tangent propagation selected, it will just move around all of that piece. So make sure there's a check mark in that. And we're going to set the distance to one millimeter if you haven't already. So mine's already set. If yours isn't, just click in that distance box and type one millimeter and um, press enter. And then once you've added that chamfer, click on the um, green check mark. And then we're going to do that to the other pieces. So now we're going to click on the chamfer tool again, um, go around the other part. So here and here, and then click on the green check mark. And now we're going to do it to the twisted connector. So all we need to do is go to the chamfer tool again um, and using the same settings, click once on each of those edges. So you're going to have to go on each one individually here like that. Okay. And then click on the green check mark. All right. So we've got that chamfer there. All right. So all we need to do now is we're going to turn this into one um, uniform piece. So to do that, we're going to use this tool here. It looks like two overlapping circles. This is called the Boolean tool. If you click that, we're going to create a Boolean union. So what is a Boolean union? Basically, it combines two or more solid parts to create a single piece. That's all it does. So click on that tool. Here we've got Boolean. Uh, make sure the Union tab is selected. And then it will say, which parts do you want to uh, connect? So we're going to click on part one, um, part two. Well, sorry, the Twisted Connector is part three. Um, so part three and part two. There we go. And now if you just look at the features list, you can see we've got part one, part two, part three, and part four. Because we've connected these, it's created a, an individual, a brand new part, which is all of those pieces joined together. So if you just click on the green check mark, you can see now as we rotate around, we've got those weird looking artifacts again. And that's because um, we've got multiple pieces existing in the same space. So what I'm going to do is hide part one, hide part two, hide part three. So now I am just left with um, the one piece, which is part four, right? Just like that, okay? So that's our twisted connector. Um, I'm just gonna click on the, uh, the view cube just to bring that back into view and then just rotate around a little bit. And there we go. So all we need to do now is um, change the color and just hide these ugly lines that are still kind of around our shape. You see, we've still got these lines here, these curves. So to get rid of this ugly line that makes it look a little bit weird, go to the curves in the features list and hide that as well. And now we really are just left with part four. All right, now it looks perfect. All we wanna do now is zoom out a little bit, drag a box around everything, right click it, and say add appearance, now either add edit appearance of part four or add appearance to 40 faces, they do the same thing. So I'll click edit appearance for part four and I'm just gonna choose a color. So I'll choose this blue color here and then click the green check mark. And there we go, we've got our twisted connector. Um, we could have used the loft tool, but instead we use the bridging curve tool and the fill tool so that we just had some experience using different tools. And that's how you make the twisted connector.